Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us today. I so wish that we were able to do this in person rather than virtually. Hopefully for our third annual Golfing for the Gals, we'll be able to do this in person. Here's just a schematic of the female gynecologic organs. For today's purposes, we're gonna be focusing on the uterus, but most specifically on the endometrium, which is the lining of the uterus. Endometrial cancer is the fourth most common cancer among women in the United States. Unfortunately, because of the obesity epidemic, it is increasing in frequency and mortality. In 2020, it was anticipated that we'd have about 65,000 new cases of endometrial cancer. This corresponds to approximately a 3% lifetime risk of developing endometrial cancer. The average age of diagnosis is 60, but because of the obesity epidemic, as well as some well-recognized genetic factors, we are seeing women in their 20s and 30s being diagnosed with endometrial cancer. Obesity, diabetes, and insulin resistance are well-known risk factors associated not only with a higher risk of developing endometrial cancer, but also a risk of dying from endometrial cancer. African-American women unfortunately suffer a higher mortality for endometrial cancer than our non-Hispanic white women. What are some of the potential reasons for this disparity? Could it be due to higher, more lethal molecular subtypes of cancer, such as uterine serous and clear cell? Is it related to higher rates of obesity and or diabetes? Or are there other factors such as genetic factors, metabolomic factors that may be playing a role here? We're going to hear much more about this in some of the latest research from Dr. Bajunk. There are really two types of endometrial cancer, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is the less aggressive estrogen-related endometrial cancer that tends to occur in younger obese patients, and it has a precursor of endometrial hyperplasia or essentially a precancer. The type 2 cancers are not related to estrogen. They happen in our older patients, have more aggressive histologies, and they typically arise in a thin or atrophic lining rather than a proliferative lining that you can get with the type 1 cancers. These type 2 cancers comprise approximately 10 to 15% of all endometrial cancers, but unfortunately, they comprise approximately 75% of the mortalities from endometrial cancer. What are some of the other factors that influence prognosis? We talked about race and that our African-American patients don't tend to do well. There are clearly pathologic factors such as the subtype. So type two does worse than type one. Obviously the stage of the cancer, stage one, two, three, or four, as well as the grade. Grade has to do with how aggressive the cancer looks like, whereas stage has to do with where the cancer has spread. There are other factors that are molecular, including hormone receptor status, other types of genomic and genetic predispositions that can increase the risk of aggressiveness of these cancers. And some of the areas to explore include the microbiome, some of the targeted therapies such as pembrolizumab or Keytruda that you might hear about on TV, targeting some new screening tools, as well as the role of navigation and improved care pathways. What are some of the signs of endometrial cancer? You're gonna see some of these on your little cards that are on the tables today but unusual vaginal bleeding, spotting or discharge, any bleeding after intercourse, pelvic pain, if you feel a mass in your pelvis or your abdomen, or you have unintentional weight loss. If you have any of these symptoms, you should go talk to your provider. You should ask whether or not you should have an ultrasound or an endometrial biopsy. And if your provider is really unsure about next steps, please ask to see a gynecologist. The important thing here is do not ignore your symptoms. Hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer or Lynch camp syndrome is the most common form of hereditary colon cancer and comprises approximately 5% of colorectal and endometrial cancers. It is vastly under-recognized. It allows for recognition and identification of individuals at risk, and then we can proceed with risk reduction strategies for other cancers in these patients as well as in their family members. We now routinely test all endometrial cancers for genetic predispositions, and in selected patients, they are referred to genetics for appropriate genetic counseling. Lynch syndrome is an inherited mutation of DNA mismatch repair genes. It is autosomal dominant. And what that means is if one parent has it, there's a 50-50 chance that each of their children could inherit this predisposition. It increases the risk of colorectal cancer, breast cancer, ovarian, endometrial, biliary, and upper urinary tract cancers. 
the lifetime risk of developing endometrial cancer is 40 to 60%. So in these patients, we do recognize the importance of risk reduction strategy. It's very important that when you're diagnosed with endometrial cancer, or frankly, any cancer, that you have a really coordinated cancer care team, not only for your active treatment, but in your surveillance. This can include for endometrial cancer, your gynecologist, your GYN oncologist, your primary care physician, your medical oncologist, should you need chemotherapy and or your radiation oncologist. While most of our patients will be cured with surgery alone, there is a risk of recurrence, and that, of course, is dependent on the stage and grade of your cancer. Some of the signs and symptoms of recurrence include headache, coughing, abdominal or pelvic pain, vaginal bleeding, swelling in your abdomen or legs, feeling lethargic or fatigued, or weight loss. Similar with the signs and symptoms of a new diagnosis, you have to advocate for yourself, and please do not ignore your symptoms. We will have a little time later for some questions and answers. I once again want to thank you for your attention today, and I look forward to hearing the presentation from Dr. Bajum in terms of some of the new exciting avenues of research and in hopefully being able to share this opportunity with you all in the future.